Thank you, Captain Chris. Uh, my name is Joel. Uh, I'm doing this course of RZIM uh, for apologetics uh, for the state that you possess, that I possess. Uh, and my, my colleague, Ms. Shilpa, is with, with us and uh, some of our crew members. Uh, we are here to actually know more about you, know more about how would you see things, how would you see the perspective of things and everything. Um, so that's what we are here. So the first, uh, so you can just tell about yourself and start from there. Okay. I'm born in the Netherlands in a small tiny, well people would call it a village. It's a small tiny city on the 4th of July 1966. I'm 54 years old. My full name is Christian Paulus Johannes Maria Mol. Uh, my mother did like to give all the names on the f of the family within my name. Uh, so I carried the name for my father, my grandfather, my mother, my grandmother. Everybody is represented in my name. That's why it's that long. She did the same with my brother. But, uh, um, I did have a very good youth, thanks to my parents. I, I was a happy kid, sometimes of course facing problems like anybody else. And what my parents mainly did as well with my brother and me is put one very strong red line through our lives. Do not do to another person what you don't want another person to do to you. The golden rule. This was the golden rule. Another golden rule which we did have in our education is do not lie. Be honest. Okay. And the way how they did really promote that in my eyes was if we did do something wrong as a kid, and we would admit we would be honest about it, we would not get punished. But more like guided, educated, why it was wrong. If we would not be honest, then there was punishment. This was one of the main things that actually happened between my parents, my brother and me. I went like everybody to basic school, high school. Then from high school I went to the military academy. And that is actually what did form me, what did make me make the things which were actually already in my character come more forward, better developed. Okay. A big part of discipline added to it. And that actually did my whole life. So, uh, so after that, so can you tell, can you tell us the story from there to here? Are you really spot your family or? Yeah. Okay, I was in the military for like nine years, roughly. I left the army as a squadron commander. I was one of the youngest one in the uh, Dutch army. Uh, the thing is that I've been in three wars, and the third one was for me actually enough at that moment. I said, that's it. Okay. I've, I've done my part way too much. Okay. Uh, when I left the army, I went to Egypt. I started working for Meuvenpik as a water sports manager. Water sports is, is really that what I love doing especially water skiing. So from there actually my life with with boats etc etc started to become taking more how should I say this? It became a more clear picture that really boats was actually that what was in me. Okay, combined with the, the management skills that I did learn in the army mm -hmm. and then Working with boats, this, this was absolute the best thing to do for me. So that, that I, 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 I did find myself in that. I met my wife in Egypt. I got married with her. Unfortunately, she passed away 12 years ago. The fact that she did pass away did make me change my career. Okay, we were running on a certain moment our own business as a water ski school. 
I, I was doing that over here, she passed away, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't, because all the memories which were connected with it, it, it just drove me crazy. So I went into marina management. I started to come on bigger boats. So from the small ski boats, I came on, on smaller yachts. The smaller yachts were, became bigger. I went over here to the Maritime Academy in Dubai, got my license as a master, and I came on bigger yachts, and that actually did bring eventually me on this particular boat. Nice. Nice. Uh, the next question I wanted to ask is uh, about uh, what model you or what is the main code tool that you have seen? throughout your life and you're still using it throughout your life. What is it okay, my code, my moral is based on, on two things. Absolute honesty and delivering quality. This is also what I did with my business. Honesty, very simple. At the end, honesty always wins. This is what my parents did teach me. And I, so, no matter what you do, uh, you can have a hard time, you can make less money, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. At the end, with being honest, you simply will win. I, I hate doing things, promising things, and then not perform according to what I did. Now, quality, that's very simple. If I deliver quality, I can ask you any price. If you are the kind of person who would be looking for cheap, so you're only looking at money, don't come to me. Because I cannot provide that. I don't want that. I want to provide quality. Because also at the end of the story, if I provide you quality, you will come back. If I provide you something which is cheap and it doesn't work and etc etc you will start to look around to find something better now this was also key in my business that I was running in Egypt I was setting the standard I wanted to deliver a quality that high that if I would come as client that I would be satisfied and I actually was never satisfied I knew I can it, it can be better it can be better so I always try to make it better. Now if it comes to price, I was the most expensive one in all Egypt. People did come to me were like, we want to ski with you, but you need to give us discount. I'm like, look guys, if you want to have quality, this is the price. That's it. End of story. You take one set, cost you so much, you take more, you can get a better price, etc. etc. Yes. But on a certain moment, if you start to Put your price down, put the, the value goes down, At that moment the quality goes down. I don't want to do that. Because it means that I am competing against others. I did create a situation that others had to compete against me because I did set the standard and they couldn't reach my standard. Yeah. That's how I think, how I work also now as captain, I want to set a standard, I want to deliver my eyes, the level of quality that I have to deliver has to be there, as high as possible. I make mistakes because I'm a human being, I learn from my mistakes, but I want to set that standard, I want to deliver that quality. Not like okay, I can drive a boat and that's it. And there's no time. Go. I'm, I'm not looking at time. I'm just. I need to have the job done, and the job has to be done perfectly. If the job is not done perfectly, I do not accept it. This is sometimes an issue that I have with contractors. I want them to deliver up to a certain standard that I can say as captain towards an owner, this is the best we can get. And I'm not an easy one if it comes to that. Alright, good. Let's see if you want to ask something before we... 
so what's your line of trade? Do you trade or do you have something of that sort? When you said about quality, I just wanted to know a little bit more on your work, line uh, of work. I trade myself. I am the product. You understand? Mm -hmm. I deliver the quality. Okay. I do the job. I do the work. Whatever is required. I'm educated to do this. Okay. I'm educated to move about. I'm educated to navigate. I'm educated as manager to manage people. Right. Okay. I do understand a lot of technical things from both. So I'm I'm not selling you a product. Mm -hmm. I'm selling you a service. Yeah. As a captain. Right. So okay. me myself, I'm the product. So, uh, uh, before we go to these questions, uh, th these are all philosophical questions where about origin, meaning, morality, and destiny. This is the structure. So, uh, every person who answers it has a different kind of worldview. What we're talking about, it might be atheistic, it might be a like, religion, religion type, or a Christian worldview, or Hinduistic, or something. Mm -hmm. So, ask yourself, what kind of worldview do you possess? Or what kind of what do you look at things? Is it an atheistic or a religious kind of worldview or I don't think it has something to do with religion. Okay. okay. I just simply have to be a good person. Proper morals, okay. honesty. Uh, this is simply a part of how my parents were educated. Okay. This is also what did come always forward at the military academy. Knowledge is power, character is more. Which, which in principle has nothing to do with the religion. Okay. So, I also believe if you are a good person and do the, thing, do the things in the right way, then if you put that back in a religion, you are automatically doing that what God wants you to do. And if you take a look at, for because I'm Roman Catholic, okay, by birth, if you take a look at what, what Jesus all the time would teach the people, it's all about one thing. And the same is if you take a look at what Prophet Muhammad has been teaching the people. It's all about one major thing. You have to be a good person. You have to have correct morals. That there are a lot of small tiny things which can be added to it to see to it that you are indeed a good person and having the right morals and something else. But it's, it's, it's a part of which has to be in you as a person. You have to be a good person in the first place, regardless of where you Alright, so let's do some of the best of our. Right. No, I think uh, once yeah. we start with the questions, we'll ask a lot yeah. of sub questions as well. So, so, so the first question would be where do humans come from? Or maybe if I'm in a better way, what's the origin of humanity? The origin of humanity, we can go back to Adam and Eve, which means that humanity has been created by God. By God. Okay. Now you can also take a look at the scientific explanation. Uh, then it would, then we would develop out of, well monkeys is not the right thing to say, but out of a lower intelligent being becoming more and more intelligent. That's the theory of Darwin. This is what they teach you in school in, in, in Europe. Original species. Yeah. Yes. Now, what is it that I believe in? You know, I'm coming from a country where they're saying one thing. Okay. Prove it. Okay. Nobody can prove anything. That's the thing. So what is it now? What are you believing? It's... it's because I did grow up in Holland, you have uh, something in me which would be in any person which did grow up in Holland. It, it's, it's questions. Okay. Why is it like this? Where are the answers? Now you can look for the answers in the scientific way. You can look for the answers in a religion. Sometimes I look for answers in a scientific way. Sometimes I will look for answers in a religion. Since my wife did die, I'm telling you that also honestly, I'm looking more at a religious way, to be honest. Okay. Your wife 
Catholic. Was she? She was Muslim, and I did also convert. So now you possess the Muslim aspects of things, or from a Roman Catholic perspective, or you mix it with? I think it's 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 everything together. Okay, it's how I got educated, how my parents did teach me. It's a part of what I did see in the church, although I did not go that much to the church, yeah, to be honest. And it are also a lot of things what I did learn from the Muslim religion. Okay. My wife did teach me a lot of things. She did show me a lot of things. And I just try as much as possible to be a good person. So you believe God gave it. Yeah. Uh, second question would be, are humans unique from other animals or organisms? If so, list three or three to five specific traits that you think are important. They are very different from animals. Um, an animal would have intercourse because of reproduction. A human does Okay. An animal has a certain level of thinking. Human is way beyond that. Although that scientifically they also say that there are certain kinds of animals like dolphins which are pretty far developed, but how much of that do we really know? Uh, we develop things, we make things, we also destroy things. That's another big difference between animal life and a human life. An animal would kill to eat, a human would kill to pleasure. Well, pleasure, I, I would not always say pleasure, I would also not say to survive, but uh, it could be to prove his point. Uh, like I said, I've been in the army, I've been in wars. Sometimes wars are useless. Okay, who did start a war? A politician. Who has to finish it and risk his life? A soldier. So, the politician, with his that moment, big mouth, did make the mess, and the soldier has to clean it up. Now, you will never see that with an animal. An animal will not start to fight unless that there's a reason of survival. Okay, or an animal will not kill unless it needs to eat. As it's defense. Hungry. Yes, or defense. As or you're exactly. hungry as food. Yeah. But. A human being is, if it comes to that, worse than an animal. We should look more at the animals and be more peaceful. And those are things what in my eyes are, are important. A human should start to react more peaceful. They are more power hungry. This is a very bad trait in my eyes. It's, it's, uh, a greed, that's another thing, you will also not see that. And if you take a look again in the religion, this kind of things is in principle a sin. Yes, there's so, a lot of evil yeah. inside of us. Try to be a good person, just simply be a good person. Stop with the cheating, lying, greediness, hunger for power, killing, etc. This did become much stronger in me again since my wife had died. I did I did change a lot when she passed away. It was really something that put me in a complete different perspective. Right now, if I would for example look at an action movie or back then when she was still alive, and back then it would be entertainment. Right now it, it, it's, it's if I see in a movie that somebody is getting shot, I'm thinking like, how would his wife feel? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because of the experience that I have with losing my wife. Right. Now, before that, it was just like, okay, a person gets shot in the movie, it's, 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 yeah. it's the action. It's, it's yeah. different. What, what happened to your wife? 
Uh, she, she had an operation and the mistake she made is that she did fly within four days after the operation. That did kill her. It did cause the, the difference of pressure in the airplane. It did cause an internal bleeding in her brain. And two days after landing, she passed away from it. Cannot fly at least two weeks after you did have an operation. And we didn't know. You didn't know? I didn't know. She didn't know either. I so guess. even the doctor is not. I was I was here in Dubai. She was in London. She did fly back from London to Cairo. I didn't even know that she had passed away. I did get to hear that uh, five days after she had passed away. I was trying to reach her for like seven days. I was calling her every fifteen minutes. I went crazy because I couldn't get. To So you're talking about the model evil and weak power and everything. So it points out with the third question, do humans have moral obligations? If so, to whom? In what situations? How are these obligations determined? Okay, a human being has moral obligations towards any other human being. Why? Because if I do something bad to you, I'm doing something to you what I don't want you to do to me. Okay, so we come back in that completely beginning stage, that first rule what my parents always did teach me and my brother, do not do to another person what you don't want another person to do. The golden do rule that to you. Yeah, so yeah. if I steal from you, I should ask myself, do I want you to steal from me? My answer is no. Then why am I doing it to you? So. If it comes to moral obligations, I owe a moral obligation towards any other person walking around on this earth, even towards animals. So you are the moral standard. I'm not. I'm not an angel. Okay. No, not angel. But so when you say uh, I wouldn't want someone else to do to me, yes, I have a standard, right? Yes. Like, I, like we always say, I, I never, I never would think that he would do that to me. And you hear people tell this, right? this is not what I'm thinking. Okay. Okay. This is not my way of thinking. My way of thinking, out of my discipline, I should not do this to you. Now you attack me. On that moment, I have to defend myself, regardless of what kind of attack this would be. You are trying to steal money from me. I should protect myself. It means that you, in principle, are acting immoral towards me. So who, who defines morality? Because even when, when Nazi and Hitler were studying about killing people, the so right to him to use. And he defined uh, okay, morality. Okay, now you're going in the direction of I would meet this person, yeah. and we're talking about yeah. this Hitler right now. I would detain him. I would see to it that he cannot do what he did. Yeah, but why? Because according to his moral standard, what he did is right. Okay. Even in China, right, when, when the dictatorship and now even most of the killing that is happening, their government says this is how it should be. Because yes. they are being the moral but, standard. Okay, but they set that standard. Yeah. In my Correct. eyes, they are wrong. Correct. So your standard might not be uh, other human standards, of course, right? Because I'm a human being. And yes. Those people are human yes. beings. So everyone defines their own standard. Okay. So that's what I'm So every human being defines the standard. Is that what you're trying to say? Because either God. So there are if you go to the religion, indeed. Yeah, yeah. If you go to the religion, you simply see also over there which kind of rules are being given to you. That is God being given to the human. Uh, to a human being. Yeah. Ten commitments. Oh, ten commitments. Ten commitments. That's exactly the right command. Okay. okay. But, well, this is if you were talking about Moses. Yeah. Okay. There are simple rules. From the beginning, that people start to develop, you see that rules that start to come in place. Now, who's going to give the rules? Exactly. Who will give the rules? Your parents will teach you the rules. You, as a parent, towards your kids, you will teach the rules. But they have to get the rules from somewhere, yeah. Okay, you get it from your parents. Your when parents get it, get it from their parents. Okay. Now, you can, you can bring this from governments, okay? You can bring this from laws, you can bring this from a religion, you can bring this from so many directions. Now, you have rules and regulations in place which are actually completely wrong. 
if you are going to judge these rules and regulations, why are they there? Yeah, why? For, for example, if you take an African country where the people are poor, okay, it is in my eyes, this is again my personal opinion, it is in my eyes immoral to put high taxes on fuel because the price of fuel affects the transportation prices. Transportation prices, again, on its turn, affects the prices of the goods, food, clothes, etc., etc. These people are not having money. How do they survive? They have the right to survive. They have the right to have a comfortable life. Now, how can you then, as a government, in my eyes, put high taxes on something that is affecting 40, 50, 60 percent of the population in a negative way. And you're doing something wrong. Yeah, but the political party were there, they think those people are outcasts. They should be out of the world. Right. And whoever average should survive, the survival of the fittest, the atheistic perspective, right? Okay. So that's why I told you initially, like when you're looking at a thing, is it an atheistic perspective? But you're talking about a moralistic, but a theistic perspective. Well, no, there should be right, there should be wrong. This has nothing to do with, with religion. Okay. This is, again, do not do to another person what you don't want another person See, to that do is to you. Quoted, that is quoted okay. from religion, not God. This is not coming from a religion. From where? This is coming from my parents. From where? My parents are not religious. See, that, that phrase, right, that is told by someone else. This I don't know because I yeah. do not know who did teach my parents. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell right. you. As we look at history, it's Jesus who told, right? Don't do to others what they had done to you. That's a golden rule that he gave to his disciples when he was talking about. That is the conformity of the the, uh, the Holland government because they opted for Christianity as a Christian nation before. Well, uh, initially, right? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Look, yeah, yeah. If you are going to my country yeah. and you're going to take a look, how many people are really religious? I'm not talking about now. I'm no, talking no, about no. history. Okay, but if you take a look, how many people are religious? It's almost nothing. That's always there, right? Yeah. But it's it's the it's the moral behavior of the person. Okay, it's the discipline which is inside in the person. It's the discipline that the parents are teaching to the kids. It's the moral behavior that the parents are teaching to the kids. My parents were not religious. Me, myself, I was not religious. Okay. Not at all. No, I'm not talking about religion. Yes. You are also talking as, about the survival of the fittest. Okay. I'm an extremely trained killing machine. To the extreme. Okay. Okay. I am trained and educated how to put people down if I would have to do this. Yeah. I'm trained to fight yeah. in a very well organized, overthought way. Okay? Because I'm an ex combat officer. Okay? You can even go further. I'm, I'm special forces, I've been in three wars. I have the experience everything as a young man because when I left the army I was 27 okay. and now this African government survival of the fittest okay what is survival of the fittest what is power force if any idea what a guy like me could do against the government like that, with the training that I did have, if I start to organize, blah, 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 and, and That's terrorism. This is immoral again. Terrorism, Okay. Yeah. You call it terrorism. Yeah. You can also, other people would call it liberation from so again, that's a bad that's government. A, that standard comes from a, a human perspective. Exactly. Right? Human no, standard, not I mean God's standard. Now, yeah. the, why does this not happen in Europe? Mm -hmm. What is happening in Africa? With a government, with an African government who is suppressing people in a certain way. Why is this not happening in Europe? Mm -hmm. Because a European government will not get a chance to do that. Why? Because
most the people who are in Europe are educated to a certain level and have, because of the education, a certain kind of power. Another thing which you will see is that you have people in Europe who are united. If you can take a look at Holland, it's one united country, it's one united group of people. The people can lay the country still, completely. If they want to have a salary raise and it's not happening and the negotiations with the government, but whatever it might be, the people themselves can lay the whole country still and they will lay the country still. Try to do this in Africa. You can't. It's tribal. But when you look at Europe, Europe before was a Christian nation, right? And they conformed their laws and laws of even making up the government to a Christian nation type of way. Even America, right? Like so when you look at that way, the standard, I'm talking about I'm not talking about the history, I'm talking about the standard, right? It's not like okay, what do I want, I do, what do you do, you do. No. There's a standard, right? Like like how you're studying the the Biomaritime Academy. That's a standard, right? Not everyone defines their standard. There is a standard up there. I need to keep up to that standard. So that's what I'm telling. Yeah, more like an objective. Yeah, objective, you know, standard. So that standard is it? Where does that human get from? Is it from religion? Is it from God, or is it that man evolved and made up something? Like this? Is it an objective? Is there an objective good and bad, or is it all subjective? Yeah. That's a difficult question. Uh, I can only give you my opinion. Okay. Okay. It's it's a part of education. Part of education. Okay. That is what it is in my case. Okay. It has, in my case, I would not say it has something to do with religion. Um, but we know a lot of um, um, a lot of bad people. Okay, like terrorists have come out from one of the highest educated universities in the world. And why is this happening? Why? Because you said it's all education, but does education what really is qualify what your is a terrorist? moral behavior? What is a terrorist? Someone who wants, uh, just like he mentioned earlier, about control, mass control. Mass destruction or against the party. There are countries who are doing mass destruction and yeah, using the armed forces for that. You want to know what a terrorist is? Officially. Mm -hmm. You have a legal combatant and an illegal combatant. An illegal combatant is a terrorist. A legal combatant has to comply with three rules. They have to be under command of one single person. They have to wear a uniform they have to wear the arms openly. At that moment you are a legal combatant, which means you are not a terrorist. If you are not under command of one single person, okay, you will be a terrorist. If you hide your arms, you will be a terrorist. If you are not in a uniform, you will be a terrorist. Now, let's bounce the ball back. If I would indeed organize something that I'm not going to do, okay, just hypothetically speaking, if I would go to Africa, I organize the people, it means that this whole group is under my command. Yeah. So rule number one, I fulfill. I put them in uniform. Rule number two, I fulfill. I let them wear the arms openly. Rule number three, I fulfill. They are not terrorists. It's an armed force. Right. So, in that moment, we're not talking about terrorism anymore. Hey, oh, we have a problem. You understand? Yeah. According to the conventions of Geneva, that defines a legal or illegal combatant. Right, so um, let's go back to your point where you said um, the more knowledge you have, the better 
person you become is what you well knowledge is power yes character is still more so personality is still worth more than the knowledge right so if you have a bad personality and you get knowledge that does not mean that you are a better person yeah. you are a more knowledgeable person now your your statement of terrorists are people who are well educated one side yes one side no they might be very well educated in certain kind of philosophy etc etc they are not educated in military tactics tactics at all if they would be educated in military tactics you would not be able to call them a terrorist okay. i am very well educated i'm highly educated right. you will never be able to call me a terrorist sure i'm because, not saying uh, because of the reason that i will comply with the conventions of geneva Okay, so uh, let me just ask you, who is a good person and who is a bad person? Who is a good person and who is a bad person? I might be a very bad person if I do something bad. Anybody who does bad is on that moment a bad person. That moment. On that moment. Okay. So what is bad and good? What is good and bad? Okay, if I affect you in a negative way which hurts you, I'm doing in principle something bad. I'm doing something again to you, but I don't want you to do. All right. So, um, how do we put it? Um, if you want me to, if if you are okay that I kill you, it would mean that you could kill me too. But do you want me to kill you? If you would want yeah. me to to hit you, I know. But the standard that they're going to is your standard. Right? Uh, yeah. Okay, but it's it discounts this this counts for this counts for everybody. Okay. This counts for everybody. Why? That's because your standard, right? yeah. no, it counts for everybody. If Why? you want to be a good person, do not harm another person. See again, you're going back to again. See, this is not what I would do, right? So you again. would be you would say, fine. I can harm you. Okay, you're okay with it if I harm you. So it means that you are allowed to harm me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What if I don't want that? That is your son. Okay. What if she doesn't want this? That's her son. Okay. Because he told the man is the one who defines the standard. Like you, you wouldn't want him to do to you, right? Like yes. so, example, who keep uh, like if you look at the history of the of the of the terrorism. I'm not. I mean, I'm using that terrorism where people kill people. He's willing to die. And he's being like a jihad, or you know, like like a, a sacrifice, right? Like I will be there to kill all, and I don't mind people killing me. That's his standard. So me telling. He thinks there is going to be a good coming out of his self destruction. Because that's what that he thinks is good. That's the standard of some people, right? And then there is standard of, you know, let's not kill each other. Like, let's. Um, I don't want you to do to me what. Yeah. Yeah. So what is there an objective like this is all subjective right each person has their own thing Wait, okay and who is he killing who is who okay now, now we go back to that person who is a suicide bomber he sacrifices himself for a good goal yeah who course. is he killing other people which other people the one he thinks is wrong Ah no 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 okay. no. What about the collateral damage that he's causing? Like like innocent people who have actually nothing to do with it. Exactly, but we say it's it's still subjective. He still thinks he's doing a good thing according he's, to him. He is he is doing something against people who are not doing anything to him. But is that the way he thinks? But is that it's right? It's not about he's. That's the way how he should think. See now, that's your standard. Now you're no, putting no, no, no. no that's just the way how he should think. Why? Because again, he is being mistreated by another person. Okay, he's out to defend himself against it because another person is not supposed to mistreat him. This can be a government. This can be an armed force. This can be police. Fine. Okay. But if he, if this person kills those that police force, and there are twenty 
other people around it who have nothing to do with it. He has no right whatsoever to harm these people. So he has the uh, the right to harm the people who harm him. Is what you're saying? This is this is something that I would say. Yes. Okay. He has the right to defend himself. Defend or defend himself. Okay. Defend him. So how is he defending now, when he's going and any any way of defending yourself? Okay. Let's say you attack me. I have the right to defend myself. Yeah. I can break your neck. If I have to, I will stop you first. We're not talking about defense here. This is but you need to go back to that because it is coming out of defense. It's not always defense. Sometimes it's coming it out is of very defense. selfish. It's coming out of defense. Why is a terrorist being created? What creates a terrorist? This is the most important thing that any person who is in contra-terrorism should ask himself. I have been there. I have been in that situation. I have been doing that job. Okay? It's very important that you understand how is this terrorist being created? What did create him? How did this happen? All right. Because okay. then you go to the root of the problem. Right, right. Yeah. If you want to prevent terrorism, uh -huh. you can do that in two ways. Okay? Yeah, you is. can you can try to stop the terrorism or you can try to prevent it. Yeah. In order to prevent it, you need to take a look how did it develop? Right. From where is it coming? Yes. Where is the wrong doing? Where, wh why did this happen? The root of it. Yeah. The root of it. It's the same with a doctor. A doctor can treat a complaint. Yes. Okay. All right. But he can also take a look what is causing the complaint. All right. And he starts to treat the cause. Yes. Okay. Right. This is this is a very important thing. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Like like me, I've I've been an army officer. I've been fighting. Why am I fighting? Yeah. Why? What's the reason? Right. Why did this happen? Yeah. Against who am I fighting? Yes. I have to follow certain kind of moral rules for that. Yeah. Okay. I cannot attack civilians. So Not allowed. Exactly. So in your army, what was the moral rules that you followed, and where was the rules from? Like, how do you think those rules were set for an army of a country? Okay, these rules are going to okay. save us. Okay. Look. You have to follow certain kind of conventions, conventions of Geneva. Okay, I'm not allowed to use excessive force. Okay, if I can stop you by immobilizing you instead of killing you, I should choose to immobilize you. Okay. Right. Now. Why? Why is life so valuable that you um, stop a person? I mean, you try not to kill that person. You immobilize that person, but not kill. Okay. What makes life so worthy? It's a, it's a life. It's a person. Like, so what is if the you, worth of if a you human are, life? Well, the worth of a human life cannot be expressed in any film. You can't. It's it's huge. It's huge. Maybe your life to me is not that important, but your life to your mother is extremely important. Okay, your life to your husband is extremely important. I don't know you, so yeah. so that's that's a different thing. Now you attack me. Okay, I should not kill you. I should immobilize you. I, I should see to it that you cannot attack me anymore. There are different ways to do that. As an officer, I was also in charge of security of army bases. Okay? There's a certain kind of protocol. Now, somebody tries to come on the army base and he is not allowed to be there. You follow rules. You say, stop. Who is this? You don't stop next step is stop or I shoot doesn't stop again you have to say stop or I shoot the person doesn't stop 
Then you fire a warning shot in the air. The person doesn't stop. Then you fire at the person, at his legs, to stop him. You're not firing at him to kill him. You understand the difference? Yeah. Right. I'm just... So, um, you value a life because... Um, because of human relations of... I mean, what, what exactly do you value a life for? I'm just asking as... Okay. What is that one thing I need to care for? My fellow there's, humans. For? There's nothing more important than a person. Nothing is having a higher value than a person. Okay? Alright. Nothing. Mm -hmm. You have to respect them. Because that person is somebody's daughter, is somebody's son, is somebody's mother, is somebody's brother, sister, husband, wife. Okay? There's no joking with them. Yeah, but um, you're talking of another person based on his or her relations, yeah? But what if that person um, was born and was actually abandoned by his parents, don't have any human relations, it's, it's, how it's do we still value a person. him? He's still a person, no matter what. That person can become somebody's father, somebody's mother, somebody's wife, somebody's husband. It's a person. So what if a person who doesn't have that kind of people, like a uh, uh, special child? Or it will come. It doesn't mean that that person is having a lower value. Yeah, so th that value, right? It's a person. That's it. It's a person. So even if that person is brain dead, but alive, it's a person. It's a person. Okay. Try to save that person. Okay. So, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, no matter, no matter. For, for example, my crew, they're coming from India, okay? Does that mean that they are less of a person to me? No. No. It doesn't matter where they come from. It doesn't matter what their religion is. It doesn't matter how rich they are or poor they are. They are a person. And this is what, in my eyes, if we come back to the, those African governments, what they're doing wrong. They're mistreating people. They could make these people suffer less by being less selfish. Okay. So the root is selfish? No. The root is not only selfish. Oh. There's much more. There's much more. Hunger for power. Okay. It can be lack of confidence, okay? It can be lack of security. Why is money so important in Africa? And why is money not that important in a country like Holland? In Holland, we don't have poverty. We don't know this. I'm lucky that I was born in Holland. Very lucky. The same thing, I would have been born anywhere in African country from a poor family, not having so the opportunities which I'm having right now. So chance got you to Holland. So I'm saying. lucky that I'm born in Holland. It's very yes, lucky, yeah. very lucky. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I do not underestimate that luck. I did get all the chance which somebody else, born in the same day, in a different country, did not get. Okay. But that doesn't mean that that person is less of a person. So exactly what I'm asking is how do you value, um, where does the value of humans come from? Because many places, um, if you look around the world, there are a lot of places where human value, human life is valued lesser. So... Where am I born? Where am I born? What is my background? Where did I grow up? So that all matters? Of course. So because because it's, it's, it's luggage which has been given to you. It's the way how you did experience life. If you go to Holland and you try to treat a person in a, in a way how, for example, a person is being treated in Angola, okay, or Rwanda, from a poor family, you try to do this in Holland and you will not walk away with it. 
it will be unacceptable. While over there, it's it's in principle also unacceptable, but they somehow walk away with it. So, uh, would you call Holland a Christian nation? It has nothing to do with religion. No, no, I'm just asking no, you because, because the America, values, the, the values. people, this, the people in Holland are not religious, but they only only, the only only ten percent yeah. would really practice religion. Yeah, but. Are the practices or are your moral values? Uh, yeah, are your moral morality picked out from the text of Christianity? No, no, not at all. How There's are you much, sure? Much more. But are you sure at least a part of it is taken from Christianity, or do of are course, they? But for sure, part is taken from Christianity, all right. but not so, everything. Not everything. Yeah. From then, where do you think it is from? Develop, where do you think the development of the people? The way how the people d develop, the way how people started to think, get educated, etc., etc. It's 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 a whole combination of things. Oh, okay. Then goes from morality to meaning. All right. What is the meaning of your life? Why the moral values? Why do you follow certain things? What is the value of because your that's life? How, that's how I grew up. Okay, no, what's so the purpose? The purpose is for everybody to be friend. So what's your purpose? My purpose was totally different on the moment that my wife was alive and when she could die. What's the purpose of this yard? To provide enjoyment. Does that change? The, the, the core purpose of this yard? The core purpose of uh, yard? The core purpose of this yard? And uh, yeah, it needs to stay afloat. It, it's 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 a safe Understood. place when you so are out is, at sea. And yeah, so when, yes. you, when you tell the, the main purpose of the of the boat, when you say a boat, is to stay afloat, right? Am I right? Or you can't say a car. A, no, no, a car transportation. Yes, transportation no, I, I, enjoyment. I, I, I it depends on for what it is being built. Yeah. Oh, so when you're talking about a boat. If the main principle is to float, mm, yeah, yeah. Right, yes. right. you can't say a car is to float. No, right. 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 So yes. thing like that, the core purpose never changes, or does it? The purpose of a human being is to be alive. So that goes back to the atheistic type of evolutionary processes, like the land of processes. Survival of the fittest, whoever stays, stays, whoever dies, dies. So this day of life, however possible. No, survival then. of the fittest yeah. is something which is a very aggressive thing. It okay. can be an aggressive thing. Yeah, it can be an aggressive thing. Yeah. There are so many atheists who are loving to poor nations. Mm -hmm. Like Bill Gates. Bill, uh, you know, a lot of people who actually believe in atheism, but they are so out to, they, they don't treat humans like survival of the fittest. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you say, just stay alive. The purpose of a human being yeah. is to be alive. Yeah. Just to be alive. Okay. You take a look at yourself. Take a look. Everybody. Everybody wants to be alive. Wants to live a life. Everybody. So there's no purpose actually. So once you once you hit the uh, end button, you die. Okay. You die. Yes. So you what, die. You, what 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 happens when you die? I have no idea. Okay. I don't know. I haven't been there yet. But you can't tell that, right? <laughs> you I that, you can't know that, right? No, now you come again in what do you believe? Yeah. Okay. And that can be for anybody different. You have religions in which they believe that you get reincarnated. In this, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, yeah. You have religions where they say you go to heaven or you go to hell. Yeah. What is it? I don't know. I cannot answer you. Okay. So you don't know where you will go when you die? I don't know. Okay. I really don't know. I have no experience in this. Have you thought about it? Yeah, a lot, of course. And? I hope I go to heaven. But what? I hope that my wife is in heaven. Okay? Because you want to believe that there's something nice after this life is finished. But believe, believe is does does help. Truth helps. If I just believe, I just want to be How the captain. How to prove it again? If I just believe, I want to be the captain of this ship. 
it doesn't happen like that. No, I need, need to, to have a license. You, I need need to, you need to study. You need to study for yes. it. Exactly. You need yes, to work I can't say I okay. don't believe. I hope I am a captain. I hope. No, I no, 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 no. So you if you can do that, so if you can talk about that, about education and the work that you do, you don't you think you take it lightly when it comes to life ending? Um, how much time? Would one person think about what it will be when life ends? Because he doesn't know the answer. I don't know the answer on how to become a captain. Doesn't mean I think about all day long. Because no, but, but this, this right? is not your goal. Yeah. If your goal is to become a captain, you will study for it. If your goal is to become a pilot, you so will it, study so, for so it. So suppose you tell you haven't talked about you know, thought about death, life after death. Uh, are you are you setting your goal to die? No, I'm asking a question that is. Yeah, okay, but that's my answer. Yeah. Are you setting a goal I to ask, die? Me, no. I I'm not setting I know, a goal I to die. I asked my person, I'm waiting for you to die so that I can be, uh, be with Christ. That's what I believe of. Okay. That, that's the, okay. So let's not go there. Let me just complete what I was trying to say. That. So the, the same part that you told after death, right? After death, that is, you don't know. No, I don't know. Have you. Research about, or have you looked on? Yeah, you did. Of course, I, how? How? In religion, now, okay, and also in science. Okay. When my wife died, I was trying to find a way to get her back. Yeah. How do I do this? I did Google this. I did. I went crazy. Yeah, yeah. Because I went crazy that she did die. What comes out of it? There is no answer. That comes out. Of it. But would you be there accepting if there is an answer? I would love to have an answer. Okay. And in, in that kind of questions, people fall back to a religion a lot. Okay. But I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry. So that's what I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. Uh, it can be just make believe and just make you feel good and do that kind of religion, which most of the religions have seen. Uh, not with Christianity, which I've seen, right? So suppose I'm just telling you, what if there's evidence that show that there's life after death? Would you be accepting the facts and the evidence? I would. Okay. Okay. So as of now, you don't know what happens when we die. I don't know. Great. Okay. The last question. What are the most meaningful or important parts of your human experience? Or what does it mean being human? To be being loved. Being loved. And love. Yeah. Being appreciated. Being accepted. Yeah. Being accepted. Being valued. Being yeah. accepted. Yeah. You know, could, could you list three to five uh, areas of things that you could, you know, tell? So one was love that you told me. Uh, one is the appreciation. Appreciation, yeah. Okay. If somebody works for you and you appreciate what he's doing, this person will work even harder. Why? Because he loves it. He loves to be appreciated. Feels good. Yeah, that kind of gives him value for what he's doing. Exactly. Right? Now, now you're a lady. Your husband loves you. That's the best feeling you, you have. Other way around, the same. Your wife loves you. Makes you feel good, you will do anything for her. Okay. So any, any other thing? So uh, being loved and being appreciated. Appreciation, love, feeling of belonging. So, who do you say you are? Like, who are you? Me? Yeah. I'm a very bad person. Why are you here? Why am I here? You mean, why I am alive? Why are you here in this world? Why am I in this world? <laughs> because my parents didn't make me. <laughs> <laughs> Very difficult question, yeah, but if, if I, 
try to make a difference in my own small, tiny field. Why I here? Because my parents want to make it. Is it a mistake? Wow. Sometimes yes, because sometimes I'm not that good. I'm not an angel. I do bad things. I did bad things. Or I do also good things. So on the other side, it was a good thing what you did. But it does injustice for what you did. Even your uh, laws of your academy would let you in, right? One bad you know, It's that big for humans to treat. Why do you think a modern authority would do it? Like, I, I understand the fact that you do more good, more ba uh, less bad, you go. But you can't do that in the streets. I can't cross five red lights and then say, 10 red lights, I'm safe. No. So if, if that human standard is like but that. But is it bad to cross a la red light? Is this because it's bad? Or are you doing this because it would not be safe? Right? OK. Crossing I'm breaking the law. Right? You're breaking the law. Yes, you're breaking I can't, the rules I can't and regulations. Be I can't be judged of the United Arab Emirates. And where are these rules and regulations of? Are there? I come to the United Arab Emirates, if I break five red signals, I am condemned. I am, a ju I have to show justice, right? Okay. Me not, me telling a justification, telling, no, no, I've been good since one year. Just give me a slack. But that's what you're trying to do when it comes to, I'm a good person. I wasn't bad like him. Okay. No. So that is no, not. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. It's, yeah. it's, 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 do not compare yourself with another person. Okay. Because well, what's the standard of who 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 does who tell you what you did? This you know good. for yourself. This was bad. You know for yourself. Okay. Okay. Now crossing the red light means you did break a rule. You did break a written law, whatever yeah. it might be. Why is this rule there? This rule is also there to protect others. This rule is there to protect you. Okay. You do not have the right to jeopardize the safety of others. If you are driving, for example, to Sarajan, one person comes like a freaking maniac in front of you, cuts you off. You can do that with me. I will follow you. I will follow you. And I will stop next to you. I will ask you one thing. What you did over there was jeopardizing my safety. Do you have the right to jeopardize my safety? Do you have that? No. no please don't do this. Don't do this. Okay. So that's wrong. Yes. So you jeopardize you jeopardize the safety of another so person, which means that another person could die from it, could get an accident from it, could die from it. So you, you affect so many things in the life of that person and the persons who are connected to you or to that person, yeah. which is tremendous. You have no right to do that. But you have done that in your life. Yeah. I made mistakes, yes. Yeah, I, did, I did drive. Yes. So I did drive. What is the justification? justification? There is no justification. There is no justification. There isn't. So how can you even think about it, right? That's, I'm why about also, that's also why, and that I did the same with my business. I try to be the best person possible. But can you be? I try. I can work on this. I'm trying to repair my mistakes. One of my mistakes also that I am having is that I can really raise my voice. Now, sometimes this saves a life. In that moment, it's a good thing. Yeah. Sometimes it hurts a person. Yeah, yeah. In that moment, it's a bad thing. And I should control that, which is a difficult thing to do for me. But I should control it. So, Captain Chris, uh, can we ask you, like, um, one of the things that I was thinking while you were talking is, um, has your life been shaped by your way of life, which is Islam, right? You said you are a Muslim so ever since you met your wife, right? So, has your life been shaped that way? Is there something that you... So, have you read the holy books? No. Have you read the Holy Bible? No. All right. Okay. So. So then, so then you cannot say they are the same. That's the first thing. 
first time. It's both are different, what they talk about. Uh, let's, let's go back to the, what I was trying to say. Why are you here? Uh, it might be a mistake, it might be a luck. Uh, what, what is wrong with the world? What do you think? What is wrong with the world? Yeah. Whew. We do not care enough about that. Hunger for power. How can wrong selfishness? Yeah. How can wrong be made right? Discipline. Okay. Maybe self-discipline. Okay. Which country does that? There's no problems at all. There's no problems, yes. Of course there are problems everywhere. So who's governing the governance? Who's governing the governance for this country? The people. You see, when, when you're controlling the ship, like right, we had before conversation that no one goes Who's controlling me? You. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. yeah. I'm also known as a captain, but I'm accountable for my actions. To who? Family of the people, etc., etc., it's always the government. But in principle, if I'm out at sea, I'm the one who takes the final decision. This final decision, I have to be aware of it that it has to be done in such a way that it does not affect the interest of the owner, it does not jeopardize anybody's safety or life. And preferably, it also does not jeopardize the safety of the equipment, so the boat itself. But if you need to choose, you choose for life first, no matter what. Life comes first, always. A person comes first, always. Because that person has a value. The person has the highest value. Given by? By normal, moral thinking. Okay. Which is developed by humans over time. By humans, yes. Over time. Yes. So before that there was no value. No, I don't know, I wasn't there. <laughs> I cannot answer you on that. Right. So, um, Hard to say. This is, this is a way of thinking. This is a philosophy. Okay, fine. No. If it comes, for example, to a boat, any boat, which is out at sea. There are rules which are called okay, uh, life, uh, solace, safety of life at sea. The safety of life at sea. They don't care about the boat. The boat can be replaced by life. Yeah. Because that was a value. The but highest if value. It, but it's sad to see that. Life at all times of death. Highest value is life. Yes. If it comes to me, I need to make choices. And it would mean that the boat, the dock, totally gets damaged. But one person is not losing his finger, then I'm sorry for the boat and the dock. His finger is more important. Okay? Because that kind of situations you can have in the boat. The deck hand can be working with ropes, okay. and he could save the boat, but saving the boat would mean that he loses his finger. Right. Right. And I'm very sorry, the damage can be repaired. For that you have insurance. It's just money. It's just money. That's it. And the boat is insured. That's it. But his finger is gone. You cannot put it back. Life, nothing else comes above that. Life comes first. And for every good captain, Tony the same. Life comes first. Regardless if this is the owner of the vessel, or it is the 
backhand was cleaning the deck. Life comes first. And this is maybe also the reason why the crew likes me that much, because I will first put them. I put them first. Okay. Anything else can be solved. I can never ever go to any of the parents of these guys and say, sorry. That should never happen. But at the end of the day, when you look at life as such, that is, is there any purpose or meaning of why we are here? To live. Just to live. And to make another person happy, to love another person, to make another person feel appreciated, etc., etc. But why? So. Because it makes another person happy. But that person talks about that. And that, that person sense. will make you happy. That makes sense. Then nothing makes sense. Yeah. So that point of view, going across that line and philosophy, doesn't make sense in life. No. Life makes a lot of sense. But why? But why? Because she's your wife, she loves you, you make sense. Okay. It's not my wife. Not my wife. <laughs> she will be your wife, <laughs> she will love you, which means you make sense. The other way around. If she's your wife, you love her, and she makes sense. But He's there is no, okay, okay, fine. <laughs> Still, he loves you because you're his sister, so you make sense. Now, I didn't know her. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't know her for like if we go a couple of hours back, I didn't even know about her existence. So, on that moment, you could ask me, does she make sense for you? In principle, no, because I don't know her. I've never seen her. That I don't even know if. But you told this. So much. Even if you know or don't know, right? If you are. And life Look, matters. Yes, of course. Any life on the planet matters, yeah. is important. More important than anything else, than money, material, material houses, land, whatever it is. It's a life. And everybody should realize that it's a life. But don't you think a person would realize or make sense when there is a purpose for life? When there is a meaning of there life? There is a meaning of life. What? Do you love your sister? Is that the meaning of life? It's a part of the meaning of life. But yes. what is the meaning of life? To live. But again, it goes back to the spiral ground that you told to live. To live for what? To make others happy. To for what? Not to live. At the end of the day, to Doesn't enjoy, sense, right? to enjoy, to feel good, to feel being loved, to feel being appreciated, to be happy. Till you so die. To die. And then you die. That might be it. There might be something after it. I don't know this. I cannot answer on that. I have no experience with it. Exactly. So uh, that reminded me when we were having this conversation. It reminded me of Jesus, right? In the Christian scriptures, right? Jesus dying for not just his family members, but for everybody, for everybody regardless of relationship. All right. Um, so what does that say to you? Like, what do you think when you hear that the first time? Because uh, that's, that's Jesus is the, by doing something like that, it's, it's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable good. Amazing. So do you believe he is, Jesus claimed to be God. He said, I am, if you see me, you see God. Okay. All right. His disciples have, have witnessed to saying that he is son of God. Then come. Oh, you know, this is again what's written in the Bible. I know this. Exactly. When is the Bible written? So there are uh, Old Testament and New oh, Testament. When is the Bible written? For what did it? Exactly. That was the way of the uh, Bible was combined. Those are scriptures, right? So when is the scriptures written? No, no, no. I have no idea because this is not my field of expertise. So, I so don't when know you it. don't have any idea, you should have a courtesy that you don't know, right? Before you question. Right. I, I need have, to know 
you need to know before you question. So yes, my book was combined in 300 AD, but the scriptures was 30 AD, 25 AD, 27 AD, uh, just after the resurrection, that was. So 600 AD is when Prophet Muhammad came uh, with, this, uh, with, with the Quran and, uh, and after a long time, like 120 years of age, then he got the scriptures. Then it's combined. So when you look at history, I'm not talking about religion. If you uh, take it uh, Shakespeare, why? How do you know Shakespeare existed? It's because of archaeological dates. One, second, historical documents. Second, third, the the letters, the documents, which is valued. How much AD is different? So when you look at all the history, it's from 100 to 200 or 400 AD gap. It is only Christianity or the Christ's resurrection, which is very short. So if, in fact, if you don't believe in the resurrection that it happened or the, the, in the scriptures, then you can't believe anything in history. Even Abraham Lincoln was the president. So, uh, right? the biblical scriptures yeah. is historical record. These are things that happened and have compiled together. Happened, God's word through his people are written together as a whole book, all right? They're not just, um, if you read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, these are not just random words. These are things that happened in history. So when we read it, we see a God who has been sovereign. That means who is active throughout. Even right now, the words of Jesus work right now. Love your neighbor as yourself, right? which you said you you do not hurt somebody you do not do something that you don't like them to do to you so love your neighbor as yourself you need to love yourself to love somebody else Jesus' words transcends over time if his words give so much value to a life to each other and if he is God do I accept him? is he the ultimate meaning for me? Because God, you are objective. You are, you are one. You are the highest, and I can look up to you. If you are the ultimate, through you I see life. Through you I see meaning. I see morality. I see my destiny. My origin is you. I see my morality yeah, but is who you. Who says that that is indeed true? You have your mind. Yeah, you have is, your this brain. Is, this, is, this is what I mean. Exactly. Okay. From which country are you coming? Okay. If you would grow up in Holland, you would talk in a different way. No, like, there's no, 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 can, no, can you, you tell would, me more about how? I will tell you why. Yeah. This is also what you would see in Europe. The more you're going to the south, the stronger the religion gets. The more you go to the north in Europe itself, okay. the weaker the religion gets. Okay. And so people who grow up in a country like where I did grow up, they will not be that religious and talking in this way, like how you did grow up, because you grew up in a different way. No. Yes, you did. No. Did you grow up in Holland? Do you know how I grew up? No, I don't know. <laughs> But you you don't know where I grew up. You Do you know where I grew up? No, I don't know. But I asked you where you're from. You say from India. Origin, my Ooh, native. Ha, ha, ha. Where did you grow up then? Let me rephrase the question. Where did you grow up? UAE. Okay. So I'm more... It's different than growing up in Holland. Believe yeah. me. So you here really you don't know up. how I grew up. Here, you don't even know if I up. had a religion while I grew up. Here you grow up. In this country, religion is very important. It's not the religion I profess. It's, the religion is more important yeah. in a country like this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A lot of things are based on the religion. All right. Okay. Education, laws, etc., etc. I don't know. We are we are what you would call atheists, although that we believe in God, but it's not that. It's not like a red line through your life, through your education, it's not. Science is 
I teach science and okay. I'm a believer. Okay. So I'm a believer in Jesus. Most, okay, and I was I was probably, born in a Muslim most, born and raised in a Muslim okay, country. I believe. Your parents are Christian. No, they they are not believing Christians as I am. Are I they am, Christian? They are born as you are a Roman Catholic. Yes, we are one of denominations. They're Christians. Yeah, but they're not investigative Christian. I'm an investigative Christian. This I really a, went UK. This is a choice you did make because it did. Because it is, it is you true. Got, you got the interest in it. This is, not this is a statement. It did. Can how, I? how did that happen? How did true. you start? Very, very good question. Yeah, how, how did this happen? So how, how did you go and focus on Christianity? Yeah. Why? So I grew up here. Okay. Yeah, did my schooling here. I went uh, for my engineering degree to India. Yeah, no religion. No, I've, I've just so concentrated on building myself and my career up. And I had a deep interest in science and a deep interest in space. So I went <coughs> to study aerospace engineering, right? So, no, I, if I had in interest in religion, I would have gone to be a a priest or something like that. So I had no interest in that sort. And my, we are church going, but church had nothing to do, no, nothing made sense to me, right? And I see a lot of Christians who behave, it's not something that I would appreciate, right? So then I didn't believe really if there is a God. I had a good, I had a thing that I should do good and I will get good. If I do bad, I will get bad. That was my theory. Up till, uh, you know. So I was in college. After college, I finished my degree. I was looking for jobs, right? And my father said, "Come back here. There is, a, you know, there is a, a space, an aviation um, base here. Like there is a, uh, Emirates or Fly Dubai, or there is Mubatala in uh, um, Abu Dhabi. There's Strata. So there are more a aer aerospace and aviation companies here. So why don't you come here?" very career oriented. I came here, I joined for my master's in applied aerospace and I started uh, working with Fly Dubai and like that everything went with my career, right? Until one day, um, not somebody from my church, yeah, I had a someone, my mother and um, my mother's friend asked few of us to go for a Bible study. And I have no interest in Bible. I have no interest in any of that because I've seen how people who read Bible behave, right? So I was forced and I had to respect my mother because my mother and father taught me to respect parents and elders, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm respecting my mother and somebody older as my mother's age. They both arranged a Bible study and I went for it. I said, I'm going to sleep in this Bible study. I'm 22 years old then. I was there and I said, I'm going to sleep for the next three days. It was a three-day Bible study. I said, I'm going to sleep here. right? Because the way I've uh, seen Bible studies before, I have just never made sense to me. I said, 22 years old, I'm in the peak of my career. I'm forced to sit at a Bible study. I'm just like, I sit and the person starts talking about a God who actually existed, a God who was here on earth, who lived like me and who gave, who freed me and I couldn't believe that I was holding a Bible and I actually looked at a Bible and I was like, what? All this is true? This thing happened? And for three days, I did not sleep. I thought I would have fallen asleep during class. Three days, I did not sleep. I listened. And something's changed here. I had an idea that if this God is full of love, I want this God. I want Him in my life. I started reading. The more I started reading, the more doubts 
okay, if he existed, I want to know historical records of Jesus Christ. I want to know where Jesus is. And what is happening in my heart? What is changing? I want to know. Slowly, then we saw, he was with me. He saw me. So I started talking to people, scholars. I started taking up courses to learn more. And slowly, I, I started getting more evidence and more sure to hear. I started changing as a person. I started seeing other people as God's images. Image of God, Genesis, in, uh, Adam. Yeah. God said, let me make him, Adam, in my image. Let me make Eve in my image. Right? So humans are in God's image. Right? Completely. So I started seeing them as images of God. Because a God loved me and died for me and gave me, freed me from sin. Because I realized my problem is sin. I realized that I was just... I was not, I was always undressed here. I was always undressed. Because I knew there was something wrong. Why do you call Jesus God? Is he because, himself called God? Yes, but he himself called him God, but he actually lived up to what a God would do. What would a God do? Hey, this is not what I did get to. Okay. This is what you didn't get. To learn. To learn, exactly. You know what I did learn? Yeah. If it comes to the Christian religion. Right. Because I grew up as a Roman Catholic kid. Right. Regardless if we did practice that a lot or not. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. The Father is God. Yeah. The Son is Jesus. Yeah. And together they form the Holy Spirit. together they form the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's what they call Trinity. They call it the Trinity. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let him so, say his explanation. So, this is what I did learn. Yeah, yeah. I'm if you ask me if I believe in that, I didn't. Because, again, we're not religious in Holland at all. Everything comes to that, the way how I did grow up is based on science. Yeah, I would get I would get you because when, I had a choice. When did I change? Yeah, when did you change? Changed when my wife passed. That made for me the big change. That made me the loss made me a better person. Made me look at things in a different way. Still, I would not say that Jesus is a God. Okay, See, would not. It's not like your Jesus is one of his prophets. Like Moses is one of his prophets. Like Muhammad is one of his prophets. Okay, so when we, um, I told you, Christian scriptures, that is the Bible, historical facts, right? History is written there. Okay. So. I didn't study this. I have to tell you that. But it's there in the world. So I cannot, it's there. I cannot answer on this. Exactly. Because I don't know. You have to examine. Like, well, what if yeah, but it's, this is again, I... No, we are I'm not... I'm listening to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely, it's, it's very interesting to hear this. It's very sure. interesting to hear your point of view as well. So we're having a conversation. I'm not... I'm not... Uh, we're not you're not trying to put your view, view on me. I'm not trying to put my view on you. I'm just telling you what I learned and what I experienced. It's just not what I learned, it's what I experienced as well. Right? How me as a person changed. How do I value each other? I value or I don't even know you or as you said, um, in spite of the relation, I like, I don't have any um, relationship with you as in you're not my uncle, my grandfather, my father, nothing, yeah? But I still care for you as God's image, whoever it is, I won't. I won't do any harm to anybody because you are God's image, 
right? Because God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus, right? These are. I'm not saying um, He's prophet because I feel so, or I'm not saying He's God because I feel so. I'm saying He's God because it's there. It's it's given. The more you look and search for God, you will find who God is. Seek and you shall find me. If these are words given in the Bible, but they make sense. Seek. He's not telling you believe. No. He's like, look for me. You will find me. He's not asking you to be like, hey, blind, sit somewhere in a corner okay. and believe it. He's like, look, investigate, find me. On the, not on the 13th, I will get to it later. On the 17th of April, 2008, right? I have been angry in a way. Right. I wanted to kick God his ass because of not protecting my wife. Which is wrong. But that's as of that moment you feel extremely, extremely angry. It was extremely angry for a very long time. And did that change, or are you still... Well, what did it change in me? In the, the, it's actually two things what changed in me. The death of my wife changed in me that I started to care way more. I started to value way more the life of people. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because I never did expect that that life, which was part of my life, taken away that easily. Okay. okay. So from that moment I really started to value life way more than what I did before. Way more than when I was for example in the army and fighting. Still, because of the education that you get in the army, you do not need to kill a person to stop a person. Right, yeah. Okay. Later Start to you start to calm down. Yeah. And you start to think different. You start to hope that she is okay. And then and the religion comes from that. Yeah. So that's actually what happened to me. This was a this was a very hard Um, if you ask me now, do you believe in God, I will say yes, I do. See, one of the things uh, we, when we looked into Jesus' life, okay, there is a part in the scriptures where his friend Lazarus dies. Alright? You should read the scriptures. There is a part where Jesus' friend, who he deeply cared for, died. And Jesus, there, everyone knew Jesus could bring the friend back to life. Alright? But Jesus was not there. He was away. He was really late. He didn't know. He, see, he being God, he knew, yes, but he, is, he, was, he, is, he was human while he was here. So, there was distance, he delayed, he came late and his friend died. Okay? His friend who he cared for. And Jesus did not just go there and bring him back to life immediately. What he did is, he wept, he cried because Jesus knows loss. He loved his brother, like you asked if he loves me and I love him. I do. He's my brother. If something happens to him, it, it will kill me. It will devastate. I would be broken. Jesus knows the pain. He wept. And then, in his godly power, he went and brought him back to life. But there was a time when Jesus felt me. Right? And I know that's the God who knows me and anybody out there because he knows pain he knows suffering and 
He is there. He is everywhere. And He deeply cares for you and for everybody around. All He wants is you to be back with Him. You are His image. You are. He purchased you with His own blood. And He said, I want you. That's what He did with all of us. And that's the only meaning that gives value to each human life. And that's what I don't know, that's what I felt like telling you. And that's what I there is a God who knows pain and suffering. We might not know why things happen. We might not know why certain things happen. But the important thing is Somebody else knows your pain, knows what you are going inside. More than a human, a God who knows your heart. And there is a God who knows your heart. And that's Jesus. Seek Him and you will find Him. You don't have to believe. completely fill me. I found that in a God. And I who else can completely fill than a superior power, something not on earth? Because everything in earth is fleeting. It for lack of a better word, perishes. It destroys, it decomposes. Nothing stays. So who can fill my heart really? I found that and that's exactly what that treasure that does not perish is what I would give anybody else. I would tell you, hey captain, there is something that doesn't perish. You know what, if you're looking for a perishable one, you can see it all around imperishable one is Jesus. Again, I know we are humans who can't just believe just like that. We can't. God knew it. He knows our heart better than we do. He knew it in his scriptures. Look all around his scriptures. 
He has told, I know how weak you are. I know your heart is filled with unbelief. Oh, you of little faith. He told his disciples. I don't know if you've read it. He's, he's told it to Peter. Oh, you of little faith. He knew it. And that's why he died. That's why he he bore it all on him and he put it on the cross. And what makes him God? You asked him what makes him God, yeah? Third day, he rose again. Who can rise again? Can any of us rise again? How do we believe he rose again? Witnesses, historical records. It's all out there. It's all out there. All of us may go, we don't know where we may be, we don't know where you're going to be. But this moment right now, that's the gift or that's what we wanted to share with you. Because God really cares for you. He cares for you, that's why. You know, before coming here, all of us, we were very tired. I went to my university, she went to school, he had school, he went for work. We were tired. But he was telling me, I, I, I care for him. I care for Captain. I really want to share a few things with him about Jesus. I want him to know God because I don't know how he cares for you or how right now how we care for you. But more than that, we know God is the one who brought us here and God cares for you more than any of us. He cares for you. He knows you. He knows everything. He's been seeing you. Go on. That's where you're going to find your rest. The person of Jesus Christ is who is going to. It's where you're going to be safe. It's where finally you're going to be free. All that whatever you have. I I can't see it. You've told me, so I understand. But who sees the heart?